guys, this is my uh, third and final part in uh, a series on how to paint Boudicca and her Celtic war chariot. Now in the first part I covered her driver slash standard bearer, and then in the second part I covered the chariot itself and the horses. So this episode we'll be looking at the Queen of the Iceni herself. Now to bring uh, people up to speed who haven't been following the series, uh, I will be linking to those two videos down below in the description box. Uh, and here is the figure that we're going to be doing this week, and this is Boudicca. Uh, in case you couldn't kind of guess, she is a really cool figure. She's got impressive mane of hair going on there. Uh, she's wearing some armor, she's got a dress, a cloak, and she's even carrying a severed head because, you know, you got to be scary and intimidating if you're the Queen of Mycenae, I guess. This figure and all the figures we've been doing in this series are from Warlord, the this particular set is actually, I don't think, available anymore, but I will link to a very similar sort of chariot team, which you can buy from them. Now, there's a lot to do on this figure, so I'm going to get started really quickly here, but yeah, this should be a great tutorial for a lot of things. I'm going to be covering how, to, for example, to paint female skin, which is different from male skin. It needs to be more subtle, so we'll be talking about how to do that. Uh, she's got a severed head, so we're going to be also talking about how to paint dead-looking skin, because that's different again. Um, also, as promised earlier on, uh, I am going to be painting sort of a tartan or a plaid pattern on her dress, so we'll be looking at that, because it is a bit different from the just checkered pattern we covered in the first video. And then to top it all off, she's got a lot of bling on. She's got chain mail, a lot of jewelry, so we're going to be doing a lot of metal painting, and plus, her, of course, her trademark uh, red hair. You really can't forget that, so we're going to be lavishing some detail on this you know, spectacular mane that she's sporting. So, I'm really looking forward to this video because there's a lot of interesting, fun things to do on this one and I'm looking forward to having this project finished. So, let's go right ahead and get started. I'm going to start out painting Boudicca's flesh in the same way that I would pretty much any other models. That is, I'm going to be using a Foundry Flesh Shade here and I'm just going to be thoroughly base coating all of the areas where her skin is showing. Uh, as I've said, female flesh needs to be handled slightly different from male flesh, but the colors we use are basically the same. Once that's done, I'm going to work on the um, severed head at the same time. And I'm going to base coat him using a mixture of foundry flesh medium, into which I'm going to mix a little bit of foundry deep blue light. Because his skin is dead, it needs to have sort of a pallid, bluey, gray tint to it. So, and it also needs to be paler, so that's why the base is going to be flesh medium instead of flesh shade, and why we're going to be putting a little bit of blue into it as well. Now for a bit of a wash. I'm not going to be putting a wash on Boudicca this time, but I am going to be putting a wash on the severed head, and this is going to be a mix of Agrex Earthshade and Azurman Blue, so I'm getting more of that unhealthy kind of brownish gray blue cast into the skin this way. We're going to continue now painting Boudicca's flesh here using just Foundry Flesh Medium, and I'm applying it just like I would to a male figure, except I've thinned it down some so it's a bit more transparent so that I can put thinner layers on and get a more sort of transparent glowing effect with the flesh than I would, because that's one difference between painting men and women. You don't want such sharp, high contrast and harsh shadows on the figure. You want it to feel smoother and more blended, and you don't want to have any really stark areas of color. So that's what, the one reason that we've avoided putting that wash on, because that dark, that dark wash would have made the contrast on her skin just too much and really higher than we would want it to be. Right, so even though I don't want such uh, stark contrast in the figure, I still have areas like between the fingers and around the eyes and between the lips where I do need a darker color. Um, and instead of using the um, Vallejo Black Red color that I often use for this, I'm going to take that Vallejo Black Red and I'm going to mix it with some of the Foundry Flesh Shade just to get a more subtle color so it'll be closer to the base and not so harsh looking. And I'm going to be just applying that around areas where I want shadow around the edge of her face and in her eyes, between her fingers, that kind of thing basically. I'm then going to continue highlighting the same way I would with any other figure using Foundry uh, Flesh Light now, which though, once again, it has been thinned down more than usual so I can apply it more smoothly and blend it out more and make it just a more subtle effect in general. Uh, that's one difference too you're going to see with between female skin and male skin. You can highlight it higher, that is to say you can make the skin appear a lighter color and it will still look good. If you uh, go too high with highlighting on men's skin it can look washed out or they can look dead or really pale or something, but on women 
for whatever reason that appears that's more visually appealing so you can get away with applying a lot more of these lighter colors as you're going to see in a minute as I continue with my highlighting. Indeed, that's what I'm doing now. I'm putting on an even higher highlight, which is a mix of Boneyard Light and the Flesh Light from Foundry. And you can see I'm applying this way more generously, this really high highlight to the figure than I would if this was a male figure. And that's because, as I said, female figures can take higher highlighting and look good. And you kind of want that slightly paler complexion and that smoother, lighter skin. So you can see I'm really putting it in a lot more places. And once I've done that, I'll take some pure Boneyard Light and really use that as a tiny detail finish on areas where I want really a lot of light like on her um, the tip of her nose and her knuckles and really uh, those kind of areas her forehead but that will be then used quite sparingly and I will blend it out quite a bit I'm now going to finish off by painting her lips. This is something I usually don't do on male figures because I think it looks too cartoonish, but on women, having color in the lips is not a strange looking thing. So I'm taking some wine stained red light here from Foundry, and I am going to just apply that straight, and I'm going to put, darken it on the edges and bottom a little bit just by mixing a little of the flesh shade into that, and then I will put a high highlight on the front by mixing the pink with some of that boneyard light just to get a little bit of reflectiveness on the front. So that's one thing I actually really enjoy about painting female figures. You can do a little bit more with like color in the lips or around the eyes, which is something that you just, you know, it'll look silly if you try to do it on male figures, basically. I'm now going to continue on the severed head here. And I'm going to apply a first highlight, which is a mixture of foundry flesh light. It's more of that um, foundry deep blue light to get that pallid bluish gray cast into the skin. Uh, unlike with normal figures, this is another case where you're going to want to highlight much more highly and go up to a higher finish color than you normally would because dead skin is pasty and washed out and pale and that's what you actually want is a pallid looking complexion in this case. But because this is a male figure, it's also okay to have a little bit higher contrast in the figure. And the next highlight on the head is going to basically be a little of that blue mixed into the boneyard light, maybe with a hint of the flash light. And you can see I'm applying it way more generously than I would to a healthy living specimen because you can, with this dead skin, like I said, you can get away with just way more highlighting than you might normally be doing. All right, so as you can see, the final highlight I'm going to be putting on this head is a mixture of white and a little bit of the blue. And obviously this is a much higher highlight color for the finish than I would use under any other circumstances, but here we can obviously get away with it. <laughs> The final detail, I'm going to paint the lips on the severed head, and I'm still using the white or that light boneyard color, uh, but I've now mixed more of the blue into it so I can get this sort of really distinct bluish cast to the lips because some areas on, you know, dead skin have this tendency to turn kind of blue. And you have to remember, since this head has been cut off, he's going to have suffered some serious blood loss at some point, so there probably is not going to be a lot of that left in him to give him color. I'm now going to move on to painting Boudicca's skirt, and I'm going to start out with a really heavy, nice, thick base coat of French blue shade here, and that's by Foundry again, of course. Now, the next part is going to look familiar to you if you watched uh, the first part of this uh, painting series where I did the uh, checked pattern on my other Celt. And I'm going to start out very much the same way. I'm going to apply sort of uh, some vertical lines, and which are fairly evenly spaced out, and then horizontal lines going across, which are also evenly spaced out, that are, should be about the same width as the dark areas in between. And uh, as in the last video, this sort of is the basis for our plaid pattern and will serve as a nice guide so that we get, you know, evenly spaced squares, you know, that fit together well. And the color that I'm using for this is going to be deep blue medium because I want to do a blue plaid pattern, but you need to have several very distinct shades of blue for this, this whole effect to work properly.
Now at this point, the other model, I would have taken where all the intersections of these uh, lines were, and I would have painted them in with that same dark color that I used for the base, and in that way I would get a, just a checkerboard pattern. But because we're trying to make a plaid here, that means that there's going to be a third color. Instead of just being two colors, there's going to be three colors, and where the lines, sort of those, li those light lines cross, there's going to be a, a sort of a different shade that's somewhat darker than the crossing lines, but not so dark as the original base color. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm painting those squares in, and I am going to be using, I think I used French blue light here to create that color. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all of those squares with that as the base. And now I'm going to begin the highlighting process and I'm going to start doing it on the lightest blues in this pattern because that'll make it easier later. You won't end up with uh, squares that are so similar in color you can't tell them apart. So yeah, it's usually best to highlight the lightest color first. And I'm just using some Foundry um, Deep Blue uh, Light as the initial highlight and I'm applying it to all the lightest colored blue squares and blending it out a little bit and I'm putting it specifically on areas in the, where the light would be hitting and avoiding applying it sort of down in the folds and creases of her dress where it would be darker because obviously this needs to be a highlight so you don't want to put it everywhere. I'm then going to continue highlighting the squares this time using a mixture of the deep blue light and some tomb blue shade and I'm going to be applying that you know to further lighten up uh, light blue squares in the pattern that I think would really be getting hit by, by a whole bunch of the light. And then on some squares where I really want them to pop out like around her knees and stuff I'm going to just apply a very sparingly a little bit of just the tomb blue shade on its own. I'm not going to work on some of the other squares in the pattern, some of the darker blues, and I'm not going to emphasize them nearly as much as I did the uh, light blue squares. Uh, this time I'm working on those sort of medium blue squares where the where there was the intersection of my lines, and I'm highlighting them very simply just using a little bit of the deep blue medium color. And where necessary, I'm also going to take some of the deep blue light uh, as an extra high highlight, but that's mostly going to go just on a few areas around the knees and around the bottom where there's that sort of seam, and I feel like I need to sort of emphasize that seam with some lighter colors. When it comes to the darkest squares on her dress, I'm not going to be doing too much highlighting because I like that the pattern is nice and really high contrast, and I want to preserve that. But on the very lightest areas where there would be the most light hitting, I am going to sparingly highlight with some French blue medium and some French blue light. But th that should really only be in a few places. But you don't really need to highlight the darkest squares very extensively. Finally, I'm going to finish off the dress using an Azurman blue wash and I'm going to be applying that to the shadow areas of the skirt just to get some even, you know, some even stronger depth and contrast in those areas and you will probably want to do this in several layers just so you can build it up a little bit. I'm now going to start highlighting up her cloak and if you noticed, if you were sharp-eyed before, you will have seen that I already base coated it uh, sort of kind of in between painting the skirt um, and I used a peaty brown shade from Foundry to do that and if you're wondering why that happened exactly sort of in between it's because I actually had painted her skirt once already sort of started it and I was not happy with it and I started over um, I'll just say very quickly about that that I was trying to do a tartan effect that had sort of some of those very thin different colored stripes in them like you often will see and I did that and I really didn't like how it looked which is why I had to start over and sometimes you'll find that that is the case so this is a word of warning for you the reason we're doing a plaid powder that does not have those thin stripes in it as it turns out at this scale it's extremely hard to do well it will just look like a mess it will overwhelm the, all those nice squares that you highlighted underneath it's almost impossible to paint those lines thin enough and finely enough to actually have them look in scale and look nice. So I decided that really the best thing, if you're just gonna, if you want a plaid pattern, try to omit those lines, even if they would actually be in the real pattern. Just play, paint the squares and worry about doing a good job on highlighting them, and you'll get just a much nicer effect. Trust me on that. The lines are not worth it, and they would, you, they're, at this scale, they'd be almost so fine you couldn't see them anyway. And then so to continue anyway about 
the cloak that I'm doing here. I painted it with Petey Brown Trade, and then I'm basically going to continue highlighting it with other colors in that triad. So first Petey Brown Medium and Petey Brown Light following that, and I'm going to just apply those thinly. It's a fairly transparent brown shade, and I'm just going to blend out as necessary on the, you know, the tops of all of the folds and make sure down in the crease it stays nice and dark. Um, and I am going to be also adding a final highlight color to the cloak, which will be a mixture of Boneyard Medium and the Petey Brown Light, just to get extra brightness on the tops of the folds and sort of around the bottoms of her cloak. Next, I'm going to move on to the steel, um, sort of in silver areas. And I'm going to start out with a base coat, which is going to be a mix of black and a Vallejo era gunmetal. And this should have more black in it than gunmetal, obviously, because you want a nice dark base. And this is going to go on her chainmail, um, also on the tip of her spear, and also on the torque that she's wearing around her left wrist. On the chain mill that especially you're going to want to apply a really nice heavy wash of Nuln oil to get some extra shadows down in all of the recesses between the rings. I'm now going to continue highlighting the metal uh, first on the spear and on the bracelet and I'm going to for that I'm just going to use the pure gunmetal shade without anything mixed into it. And I'm going to do it on the chainmail too using that overbrushing technique we've discussed before where you wipe most of the paint off your brush and very lightly just try to apply paint over the surface basically so that you get that nice sort of shiny effect without losing the wash that you just applied. With the uh, the highlighting in the gunmetal done, I'm going to quickly apply a wash to the chainmail only of some Agrax Earthshade just to warm it up and get a little bit of brown in there and also counteract some of the shiniest areas in the mail. Now I'm going to continue highlighting the metal, this time using a Vallejo Air Silver. Uh, I'm going to be applying it even sparing, more sparingly than I did before with the gun metal. So I am going to do a little overbrushing with it on the chain mail, but I'm going to keep it really subtle and I'm going to apply it mostly to her silver torque and just a little bit to the tip of her spear, but we want that to look more steel than silver. So, you know, take it easy with this color. Um, once I'm done, I'm then going to do a little bit of washing again in the chain mail, this time with Nuln oil again, just to tone down those areas that, where I put the silver for a really shiny effect where it's now become basically too shiny because chain mail shouldn't be that bright. The next metal area, of course, that needs to be painted is the brass and gold areas. And there's quite a bit of that on this figure. For a base, I'm using Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown, as I often do. And I've mixed in some Vallejo Air Gold, but not in a very big proportion for this initial base coat. And I'm going to be putting on her two bracelets, her uh, belt buckle, and also, of course, on the um, hardware and fittings of her sword, which, uh, so, you know, these areas are all fairly small, but they're definitely important. And oh, don't forget also the clasp on her cloak because I overlooked that and had to go back and do it later. Now I'm gonna highlight all those bronze and gold areas then I'm just gonna do this with Vallejo Air Gold. Um, there's a lot of sort of deep etched work on her fittings and jewelry, so that's really just a question of applying the gold on the high areas carefully and making sure you leave the uh, dark color showing underneath. Um, on the bracelet on her right arm, it's a little smoother, so you're going to want to just sort of apply the gold and blend it out to the left and right so you look like, you know, you've got a model with light hitting basically on the top surface there. And for the final highlight on these areas, I'm going to mix some silver in with the gold. Uh, you probably don't want too much silver and you want to do, be very sparing with this as I've mentioned before because it will otherwise look like a mess and it won't look like gold. It'll kind of look like dirty silver if you're not careful. So use this color sparingly as a high highlight on your uh, gold areas especially. Now for the various uh, leather areas on this figure. I'm going to start out by doing the belt and the uh, sword scabbard 
And for that, I am using the German Camouflage Black Brown from Vallejo, as I often do. And I'm gonna put that on as the base coat. And then I'm gonna do a highlight first with the um, Bay Brown Medium color, and then follow that with Chestnut Shade and Chestnut Medium, applying that to the edges and sort of blending inward so it's darker at the center and being very sparing, particularly with that last Chestnut Medium color. Um, I've covered this technique in quite a few videos, so I'm not gonna discuss it very extensively here. Next, I'm going to paint her uh, leather shoe where it's sticking out. I'm just going to be real fast, real simple here, and just use the basic foundry rawhide tri hat. Just apply the base color and then highlight, you know, appropriately with the medium and light colors. This doesn't need to be fancy. At this point, I'm also going to quickly take care of the grip on her sword, and I am going to just use the Boneyard Triad for this. So apply the shade color and then just highlight very quickly with the medium color and then finish it using the light color as sort of an edge highlight. The final leather areas that need to be done are the trim on her chain mail, which is sort of around the bottom and around the sleeves. Be careful you find all the areas. Some of them are kind of hidden. I am using Conquer Brown for this, and it's just very simple because they're small, thin areas. So just apply the Conquer Brown shade color, and then just go right ahead and highlight with the Conquer Brown medium and the Conquer Brown light. This is nothing fancy, and you should be able to finish it quite quickly. And now I want to do the hair on the severed head. And this doesn't need to be anything fancy, but I want it to be black because I think it makes a really nice contrast with that really light kind of dead pallid skin. And I don't have any other real black anywhere on the figure. So I'm just going to first start out by base coating the hair with just plain black paint. Though I have mixed in a little bit of, of uh, German camouflage black brown from Vallejo just so it's not so oppressively black to get a little bit warmer, basically. Um, I'm then going to go ahead and highlight, especially sort of the top of the head where the light would be hitting with a mixture of charcoal gray and some more of that German camouflage black brown just to warm it up a teeny tiny bit. And you can see I'm sort of highlighting around his roots to get, you know, just a little bit of color variation, but keep this subtle because you don't want him to look gray haired. Uh, and then I will finish off the hair with a, with a wash of Nuln Oil and that's basically just to get a little bit more contrast and get some color down in the in the cracks between where you know his strands of hair are sculpted all right now for my least favorite part i'm going to go ahead and paint and highlight her spear shaft i hate painting spear shafts because they're just annoying it's, it always feels like kind of a tedious chore because you have to get the paint everywhere and especially applying the highlights so they look smooth and you've got like light hitting the top but it blends out nicely and it's still a different color on the bottom. It's annoying and it's troublesome because you have to rotate the figure all around to get all the different sides. But basically here I'm first applying a base coat of the uh, Foundry Spear Shaft shade color and then I'm going to go ahead and take Spear Shaft Medium, apply that as a highlight and I'm going to highlight pretty generously with that but luckily it's pretty transparent and it you know it's easy to put several layers on and build up color and then finally I'll take the Spear Shaft light color and use that mostly on the very top of the spear to really show where the light is hitting this weapon. Now, last but not least, of course, we have to do uh, Boudicca's spectacular red hair. And I don't know, something about the way this looks and the way it's sculpted kind of makes me think of a certain Disney heroine. But, you know, hey, that's not a bad thing. I think her hair is really cool. So we're going to start out here with a base coat of a foundry tan shade, which is kind of a orangey brown color. To define all the ringlets, I'm next going to apply a really heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade all over her hair. In order to highlight her hair, I am going to be taking a mixture of Foundry Butterfudge Medium and a bit of the tan medium color, which is actually a very, very bright orange color, but it's a little garish on its own and also quite a very transparent color, so it doesn't go on very well. But you can mix it into other, other colors very nicely to get them nice and orangey. And butter fudge is a very pretty color and I think closer to what a natural redhead is going to look like than actual bright orange. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to highlight all of the ringlets, just sort of going vertically from top to bottom or bottom to top, whatever you prefer. 
uh, you're just going to want to leave that that wash down in the dark recesses in between the ringlets. But you want to otherwise apply this to pretty much you know each sort of long strand of hair if that makes any sense. And you can still get down in the cracks, especially if you thin the paint down just a little bit. I'm now going to highlight the top of each one of the little curls in the ringlets individually using a mix of the butter fudge light and some more of the tan medium to make it extra orange. You can see I'm just going along and individually putting that light color on that, those, sort of, those sort of top parts of the curls where it sticks up. And this is not particularly hard, but just a little bit time consuming. And then as a final highlight, I'm going to mix quite a bit of white into that color I just made, and I'm going to apply that again to the tops of all the little curls, but I'm going to do it uh, very sparingly, so I'm just going to put a sort of a teeny dot in the middle, and this is sort of to give the impression that she has very shiny, glossy curls, and the, the light is sort of hitting the middle of each one of those sort of ringlet bits and, you know, bouncing off, and it just, you know, makes them stand out very nicely this way. As a final step, I'm going to apply a nice generous wash of uh, Reikland Flesh shade here, and this will help unify the hair, bring it together. It'll make it a slightly more red. It'll give it a deeper, uh, richer color and get some, w rid of any of sort of washed out sort of feeling that I might have got from highlighting the hair. And I'm also going to put a little bit of that wash onto the gold areas and uh, br bronze areas she's wearing just because I find that the color is not quite as rich and red as I'd like. Okay, and here is our finished Boudicca figure with everything done. I hope you found this uh, interesting and useful. It looks like the wash in her hair actually dried a little tiny bit shiny, so I may correct that later with some matte varnish, but that's no big deal. Washes sometimes do that, but like I said, it's not a big problem to fix. Um, I hope you found this useful and interesting. Um, I know that my plaid was didn't really go quite according to plan, but I think it worked out really well anyway. And I learned, and hopefully you learned too, a valuable lesson about trying to paint plaids and you know what you can actually get away with at this scale. Um, also, I hope you enjoyed the flesh painting. Uh, I think that looks really good as well, and it's you know it's useful to know that you know you have to approach women differently and also corpses as it turns out and now finally here is our completely finished model where i combine everything i've done over the past two videos i've taken boudica and her standard bearer slash driver and i've glued them into the chariot so now you can see how the whole thing looks together and i hope this should show you also something that i kind of hinted at in the other two videos where i'm trying to uh create a unified model by making color choices that work together you know and make everything look cohesive so you can see why now I use blue um, like to paint the size of the chariot why I worked it into the standard bears tattoos and then again into Boudicca's skirt so it comes back throughout and the horses themselves have a blue cast as well and then you've got a lot of browns not just in the wood of the chariot and the leather, of course, but also in the standard bearer's pants. So you end up with this very nice sort of brown and blue sort of toned model. And, you know, then you've got some other accents like Boudicca's hair, which is obviously a real focal point of the model. And, you know, that's nice. You want to have a unified model, but it's also good to have some you know, element like the hair that really draws attention that it's somehow different or original or, you know, is unexpected compared to the rest of your colors, which are more cohesive and make more of a whole. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video series. Uh, it's been a lot of work, but it's been interesting for me. It's been fun. It's also been challenging. I've had to struggle with some things while I was doing this. It hasn't been easy, and I've got definitely been frustrated sometimes, but I think in the end, everything turned out really well, and so let me know what you think. Please like this video. Share it with your friends. Uh, leave me comments, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be back next week with something totally different, not anything so ambitious next time. <laughs>